Well, there's the moon again. Um, it is now, what, 12.35 or so in the morning on what is now Wednesday, uh, sorry, October, August 21st. It definitely feels like October. It's a little chilly right now, um, even though we're still in the middle of summer. And um, it's feeling a little autumn-like. But right now I'm staring at this amazing full supermoon that is still shining through my window. And um, I'm lying here bathed in moonbeams. It's just incredible. And I'm listening to the psycho scum all around me getting really violent and agitated all at once. And it often has something to do with what I do in this unit. Mr. Oleg Lisseyev, the property manager of the Greenville Group, has basically informed me that his fixer, a criminal, a psychopath, a sex offender, and a hacker named Jasmine Irizarry, is in his employ. Uh, the property manager is a bit of a sociopath, and he literally brags to your face about criminal activities that he's engaging in against you or in general as if he has every right to be doing that. Elisayev is Russian. He has a Russian last name. I'm assuming he's from Russia since he has an accent. And I guess they do things a little differently in Russia or whatever part of Russia uh, land that he comes from. You know, it could be Eastern Ukraine or something. I don't know. And these people are using surveillance devices in this unit. That's a fact. It's been confirmed by multiple police officers, detectives, co-workers, friends, family. I mean, it's in the public domain. So these psycho scum, filth, that are constantly making slamming and banging noises directly below my bed when I happen to pick my wedgie, scratch my armpits, etc., or then smack the wall behind my kitchen sink when I go to stand at that sink and I'm facing the wall because they know what I'm doing. They're just doxing their own mentally disturbed, rejected, uh, sweepy uh, lifestyle, right? They're just basically paid or sponsored career harassers that are so miserable and disturbed that this is what they do to other people 24-7. My life will never have anything to do with these asswipes. That's what they are. They're literally asswipes. They're sex offenders. They have uh, serious violence problems. They perv and creep all over what other people do in private bathrooms. So these human beings are barely even human. They're just filthy, filthy bottom feeding scum. And one of the things that they have done, according to Mr. Oleg Lisseyev, is hack into my devices. So even when I write notes to myself about my own uh, personal uh, thoughts or activities or whatever, they are aware of what I'm writing. I made a video earlier today about a particular divine connection that I have with a soulmate. I have a number of soulmates, not just one. And I also have two twin flames. And I mentioned the twin flames because they are two of the most magnificent beings I have ever known, come into contact with and met. I worked with one of them for a year he was a co-worker. I saw him almost every day. The other one was not quite a co-worker, but still lived and worked. He didn't live. He worked in the same building as I did. Um, and I saw him a few times a week. He'd also come into my department. And I interacted with him a number of times. And I interacted with both of them, my, my magnificent, mind-blowing twin flames, to know that there's a huge difference between a twin flame and a soulmate. So when soulmates came along afterwards, I was like, whoa, still a divine connection, but not a twin flame. And maybe that's a good thing. And the concept of divine connection is very important here because it is a connection that nobody can mess with. And these lowlife scum all around me who hack into my devices and like to smack the wall when I write things about them to let me know that they have access to what I write on my device and they know what I'm writing and I, they know I'm writing it about them. Well, they've been trying to interfere with my divine connections for years. It started when I was working with Twin Flame number one. 
and the psycho scum Irizarry in 78 had knowledge of what I was writing about twin flame number one on what was then my laptop and tablets. And twin flame number one was always kept informed of my thoughts about him through the hacker in 78. It was pretty messed up. And yet that connection persevered. And the only person that did end up not honoring that connection was him. It wasn't the psycho scum ass wipes around me who were trying to sabotage that connection. That connection endured beyond that employment situation. Same thing with twin flame number two. And now the same thing is happening with this particular soulmate who I actually mentioned in a video earlier today. So these stupid low lowlifes were constantly just perving and creeping all over what I do in here because they're apparently being sponsored uh, by the Greenville Group or by Mr. Eliseyev as career harassers, stalkers, doxers, whatever you want to call them. They have knowledge of what I write about my divine connections, my soulmates, twin flames, etc. And they also know who these people are. So they regularly try to basically make me look as bad as possible to my soulmates or twin flames or whatever divine connection I might have in front of me at any time. And what they do is they send some very unflattering, defamatory, often false content about me to these soulmates and twin flames, my divine connections, hoping that this will basically sabotage that connection. That is how mentally disturbed and pathetically stupid they are because these are divine connections. They don't know what a divine connection is. You don't destroy a divine connection unless you're God. And unless you're God, you can't make that connection go away. That is what makes it a divine connection as opposed to somebody you meet on Tinder and spend a few hours with um, engaging in some, you know, wholesome or not so wholesome activities in the bedroom and then you don't see them again. I think that that is the only experience that these low life trash around me have had with love or intimacy. And they are so fucked up in the head that they think that by sending unflattering information about me, that's probably not even information. It's probably a bunch of lies to the individuals who they somehow know are my divine connection at the time that they're going to somehow manage to sabotage that connection that's just really sad. And it is as sad as everything else they're trying to do to literally just screw with everything that I have going on. They're that jealous. They're that mentally disturbed. They're that miserable. And they're being paid to do this. I mean, this is a 24-7 operation, folks, because that is what Mr. Elisayev of the Greenville Group is permitting to happen. I've been informed by multiple people that Irizarry the psycho scum sex offender, hacker, psychopath in 78, and the rejected violent thug directly below in 76 are being sponsored. That is the term that several people used, sponsored by the landlord to engage in 24-7 harassment. That is not me coming up with that. That is other people telling me this. So again, these sad, wasted, rejected ass wipes, because that's what they are are trying to mess with my divine connections. So I'm going to say this about a divine connection. It is something that you do not find on Tinder or on match.com or whatever else is out there uh, to hook people up. It is divinely ordained. It is something that is beyond anything that you might want to happen or not happen or anything that the other person might want to happen or not happen. The only people that ruined or maybe aborted my twin flame connections were my other twin flames themselves. And that is up to them as the other party in a divine connection. If that other person wants to walk away, you have to let them and you have to do it graciously. You have to let them go away if it is their own decision, but no amount of defamation of lies of sending unflattering videos or unflattering images of you to somebody who is your divine connection will sabotage that divine connection unless the other person on the other end allows that to happen. And then if they do, then they should walk away. 
if it's that easy for them to walk away, to be uh, dissuaded from being a part of that connection, then they've got issues, right? I had to realize that both of my twin flames were immature emotionally and were looking for things that were way more physical than spiritual. Um, and I was past that. I am at least 12 years older than my twin flame. And I've had way more life experience and wisdom than he did. And I still think he's a magnificent being, but he needed to be left on his own to grow up. And when he did grow up, you know, I was not around anymore. Same thing with this current divine connection. I think there's a similar age difference. And these male divine counterparts are often in a process of growth and maturing that I've already reached. So when they allow sabotage to ruin the connection or they just do it themselves, that is up to them. But they are the only ones who can sabotage anything. And I'm going to say this. I've been in love enough times in my life to know exactly what that is. And I know exactly what it entails. And it entails dropping all of your ego, your little petty preferences. For instance, you know, women who have a checklist like, oh, I want a guy who has this. And I want a guy who makes, you know, a hundred grand a year. And I want him to have this kind of car. You drop all that. When you are confronted with somebody that you are insanely in love with, you just you drop all that. None of it matters. So um, divine connections are ordained by God. That person is meant to cross your path. You are meant to know them physically in the, in the physical realm. This is not an imaginary relationship. This is something that happens physically face to face. And if that connection is 100% equal on both sides. So if that other person is your 100% match. If they match you in every way, they will not walk away when these psycho scum ass wipes so-called activists send them unflattering images or videos or information that is basically lies about you. They will not only ignore that stuff, they will allow it to strengthen their allegiance to you, their connection to you, their uh, commitment to your connection and what you have, right? They will basically circle the wagons and go after the ass wipes who are trying to sabotage your connection. And if they don't do that, then they are not ready for that connection. And that's okay. That happens. That that has happened to me. And as an intelligent, rational, perfectly sane person, you let them go. In fact, you, you realize you're better off without that person in the connection because ultimately if they're not ready, then, you know, God might have placed that person in front of you and the connection might come from the divine because it's there, right? But there's some maturing and growth and maybe lessons to be learned and maybe that's the whole point of it. So today's soulmate, they tried this evening at around 8.30 p.m., to sabotage that connection. I don't know what they did, but all the violent slamming, banging, constant marijuana smoke from the bathroom of 78, the creep in 88 suddenly blasting super loud. Uh, I don't know what horror movies, what women screaming or whatever he watches all the time. The violent psycho thug, hate stalking, ass wipe directly below in 76. They were all literally slamming and banging things around because evidently their activist uh, efforts had managed to reach uh, this divine counterpart that I have. And I'm just going to say this. That connection is ordained by God. And you can't mess with it, low lowlifes. The only person who can mess with it is the divine counterpart who is physically on the other end of this connection. And I'm not going to tell him what to do, but if he follows his heart, if he is truly the person that I think God intends for him to be or the divine intends for him to be, he's going to look at all this filth and be like, sorry, bitches. Yeah. Right. I mean, I would, 
if somebody came to me with unflattering whatever about him and I had to process that information and I had any amount of self-pride and intelligence and discernment, I would be like, wow, these people are desperate. They're psychotic. They're miserable. They're a bunch of wasted rejects who are so mentally disturbed that they're trying to literally ruin a soulmate connection. And I'd be like, well, that's too bad for them. You have to know yourself. You have to know your, your heart. You have to know God. And so if you are all those things, then nothing like this can affect you. If you're still in the process of growing in that, de in that department, then, you know, if you're a weak individual who's concerned about how other people think, then yeah, that kind of stuff can affect you, but then the other person is better off without you, right? If that is your level of allegiance or of commitment or of worth, then maybe you should be walking away. I'm talking theoretically here, obviously. I might be stronger than a lot of people, but I do not try to influence their decisions in any way. I want their decisions to be made on what they have going on inside of them. And if what they have going on inside of them is greater allegiance to psycho scum activist rejects who are really just mentally disturbed criminals who are sponsored by the Greenville group, then that is their allegiance. And they are showing exactly who and what they are by having an allegiance to that type of low life scum. And if they are somebody who is close to God, who has a lot of intelligence, discernment, who is a fighter, and who is worth my time, my focus, my energy, and all of the months that it took to get to this point, you know, then, then that is divine. And that is worth my time. And that is somebody who will have me 100%. Otherwise, they won't. When there's a divine connection, and one of the physical people in that divine connection is weak or is not quite ready, what God does is he creates a situation where that person has to make a choice and then they basically get dropped off somewhere by the universe to preserve the connection for, for somebody else who is going to be worth it. It leaves the door wide open for the next soulmate or twin flame to walk in and because there's always another soulmate or twin flame and you do not fuck with God. That's what these filthy low lives are trying to do. They're trying to fuck with God and you do not fuck with God. So when God ordains something, when, again, two people on the opposite ends of a divine connection are 100% equal counterparts, then no amount of sabotage, defamation, lies, rumors, um, you know, any kind of efforts to ruin that connection will work. But if one of those parties, these two physical people, if one of those parties is less mature than the other one, and so far I've always been the more mature one, then a situation is created where that weaker person, that less mature person, that uh, less committed person gets dropped off on the next street corner by God, by the universe, and then a new connection comes in, a new person physically comes in. I have other soulmates. They are literally around the block physically. I know where they work. They work around the block and they're still there. They're still soulmates. And maybe it's just a question of the right time for them to walk into the door. That's a fact that's happened to me so many times. I don't even know. I can't even count at least 10 times over the last few years where a soulmate turned out not to be quite ready or not mature enough or just weak or was concerned about, you know, gossip or whatever. He's weak. He gets dropped off at the next corner by God or by the universe. And the next week, literally, God brings me another one that was much better. So, you know, in a way, sometimes if people bow to social pressure and not walk away from you, maybe they're doing you a favor because a stronger, more committed, more mature person can then come in. And what I'm getting right now 
is that soulmate of the moment of right now and of what the last two years is actually exactly what I think he is. I'm never wrong. He is exactly what I think he is. So I don't need to wait and see folks. It's already here. It is here and it is divinely ordained and you don't fuck with God. And these filthy low lowlifes are too stupid to figure that out. So good luck to them. Maybe they should go try to sabotage their own connections because as far as I can tell, they don't have any. They never have and they never will.